I'm going to keep it short because I have to speak tonight as well, and I'd like you guys to come and ask questions later on tonight. Um, I just uh, recently traveled back to the United States uh, on October 31st. I had to drop my refugee claim. Um, if any of you have been following my story, um, I was a refugee claimant in 2005 after deserting the Iraq war. Um, I believe the Iraq war to be illegal and immoral on many fronts, um, and I'm currently writing a report on that and why I think that is illegal and immoral. Um, I witnessed uh, what I believe to be war crimes, and I witnessed what I believe to be a, a true occupation for oil resources and not a liberation or a bringing of democracy to the people of Iraq and I refuse to take part in that war. And, um, so I, I basically want to tell you my story about the trip to the United States. Um, like I said, I dropped my refugee claim, meaning I had to go into the Canadian government, CBSA, Canada Border Service Agency, sign pieces of paper saying that I was returning to my home country to receive a discharge from the United States military. I worked for two months uh, just west of here in Wetasco in Alberta, trying to receive a discharge from a major on Fort Knox, Major Brian Patterson, who somehow doesn't exist to the media now. Um, when I turned myself in, uh, I was very, very scared. I was very scared because I had dropped my life here in Canada. I left my job, I left my family, um, I left my friends, all on the chance that I would be discharged when I turned myself in. Um, the lieutenant walked in and said, don't worry, we'll discharge you within three to five days. That never happened. They put me in a room with a mirror and a phone that was not connected to any wall. There was no phone connection. They denied me access to my lawyer and said they wanted me to, they ordered me after two years of not serving in their military to return to my unit, um, which is now based in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. My unit wanted to reintegrate me into the military and send me back to Iraq a second time. The 94th engineers are deploying for a third time to Iraq. They're one of five units that is deploying to Iraq a third time. Um, since the surge uh, that Bush ordered when I was in the country. Um, I did the only thing that made sense to me at that point. I refused to sign the orders. I have documents saying the soldier refused to sign. And I went AWOL a second time. I did not catch the Greyhound bus, instead I went out to eat and enjoyed Halloween. Um, and I did the only thing that made sense, again, and I pointed out the atrocities of the Bush administration in New Orleans, where we rebuilt a veteran's home, a Vietnam veteran's home. Um, and I was almost arrested in New Orleans shortly after rebuilding this home with Iraq veterans against the war. Um, Anyway, uh, I spoke at 20 different public high schools in Chicago, primarily African American and Latino communities, schools that were going to be shut down by the American government because there, there was no funding to them. Recruiters feed off of schools in America like this. Um, and I, I did anti-recruitment work in these schools, basically pointing out to the government again that if a recruiter can walk onto a campus legally, why is there not a steel worker standing next to him? Why is there not a carpenter standing next to him? Why is there not any of these My plan was to receive a discharge, come back to Canada in time to spend Christmas with my family. I couldn't do that. Instead, I bought my fiance a ticket back to Wetasco in Alberta so she could spend Christmas with her family. And I stayed in the United States and I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I decided to come back to Canada just this January. And um, 
I can no longer apply for refugee status, even though I was only gone for five weeks. I know people that go on vacation for longer than five weeks and come back to the life that they had. Um, so now I don't know what I'm going to do other than apply for permanent resident status and I don't know how I'm going to be able to stay in Canada and I really, really need your guys' help to support me in my staying in Canada. Um, and I really want to thank all of you for being here today and for calling for the Canadian troops out of Afghanistan, especially, and calling for the United States out of Iraq. It means so much to me that you guys are doing that. And, um, Announcement to make. Um, I'm really pleased to announce that there are enough war resistors in Canada that we can start a chapter of Iraq Veterans Against War in Canada. Yeah. So, we're doing that very shortly, and uh, we'll be putting up a website for donations and for anything, uh, just events that Iraq Veterans Against War will be doing here in Canada in the near future. So. Um, I just wanted to announce that. Thanks.